Welcome to the mini series we summarizing fast.ai lectures and uh, rob thanks for joining me rob is summarizing the things jeremy says to do yeah thanks for having me all right i'll like always go back and summarize the lecture and then i'll let you take it from there lesson 6 even though like the title don't do it justice there's a lot of things going on here it talks about regularizations convolutions and data ethics we learn how to improve training and avoid overfitting by learning three techniques dropout which is essentially randomly deleting i forgot what random <laughs> dropout randomly deleting uh, activation yeah yeah different activations activation that training yeah we can just restart yeah no i i could take it from there three things drop out which randomly removes activations during training in order to regularize the model again i'm assuming you've already watched the lecture and this is a summary so you don't get blasted by jargon data augmentations which essentially creates pseudo data or varies your data just so that your model doesn't overfit to the training data patch normalization adjusting the parameterization of a model to make the surface loss surface smoother again if you haven't watched the lecture really you should after that uh, we learn about convolutions which are showcased by jeremy as a method of matrix multiplication a variant of that after which we build a heat map to under understand what parts of an image really activates so to speak a cnn or the model and again there's there's a very important discussion afterwards about data ethics how things have gone wrong in machine learning even though the pro- uh systems were in production things have gone horribly wrong and i don't think i can recommend a better person but uh, follow jeremy and rachel on twitter rachel at least really lives by it she's i think now dedicated her time in a full time position just to concentrate on the data ethics side of world and I, with that i think i've i've covered pretty much everything yeah i think you made great points about uh rachel's contribution here and i think everybody should follow her because as a data scientist as a machine learning practitioner you need someone in your ear just kind of letting you know like here's a blind spot you might have here's something you could mess up um because you know we're so focused on the code that sometimes we don't take the time to stop and think about uh these edge cases that are supremely important so just following Rachel on Twitter is uh kind of a passive way that you can keep yourself informed and keep yourself from making mistakes of the past that really harm people that's being at least better than being completely ignorant to the fact that this is a serious topic <laughs> yeah absolutely and i think uh you know so far the industry is starting to wake up to it but they have a lot of making up to do as so many companies you know in the effort to race forward and have the most cutting edge tech uh data ethics is sometimes taken a back seat to getting a half percent more accuracy or so i think it's just a huge part and jeremy does a great job of really emphasizing it throughout the lectures yep um so yeah let's jump into the advice uh in this episode jeremy talks about one of the best opportunities you can have for research and at this point lesson 6 you actually are starting to be able to do some basic ai research of your own which is absolutely incredible 6 weeks into a course uh, he says one of the biggest opportunities is to figure out how to do data augmentation for different domains. So everyone's studying how to do it for images, but how do you do data augmentation for audio? Uh yeah. what are the tricks you could use to do it for text or another domain that you're interested in? So even just taking some of the existing methods in computer vision and finding their analogs in uh audio or text, you could have some groundbreaking work just taking asking oh what what would stretching an image be like if we did it to audio how do we stretch audio how do we crop audio uh so if you're interested in research that's a great lead and there's just a ton of low hanging fruit in that area for sure um another point it makes is about at this point we're really trying to understand a neural network how it works the different layers how they fit together and his advice is that the best way to do this is to look at the rank and dimensions of each tensor 
uh, and each layer going in and out. So essentially the shape of each layer of your neural network uh, through the convolutions, uh, through the linear stages, at the activations, and under try and understand A, what's going in and what's coming out, and B, why, you know, why are we doing this? How does this help a uh, CNN to learn? What feature is it extracting at this point? Uh, so yeah, really going back to the printout of the model summary, the list of the actual layers and the diagrams that he draws in the class and trying to understand how these things really fit together conceptually is the best use of your time at this point. One of the better things that worked for me was like, Again, like closing the tab and taking pen and paper or now I'm against that. So I use an iPad and I pencil or use something else if you don't like Apple, but just drawing it without looking at the stuff to seeing or just doing a self check on how good am I with recalling that. And that was helpful for me. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, myself as well. I've learned that learning any way you can take it into different mediums to be coding with it, to be drawing it. Uh, helps you really internalize the concept faster, just playing with it in different mediums, uh, looking at blog posts that do visualizations, and you know, really not just looking at it from one angle, but from multiple will help speed up your progress. For sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure you didn't miss anything. Did I miss anything there or are we, should we wrap it up? I think we're good. Okay, thanks again, Rob. Yeah, thanks everybody for listening. <laughs> If you like the show, please subscribe and tune in each week to Chai Time Data Science.